Well, controversial legal reforms in Indonesia have been delayed as police move to quickly stamp out any further unrest in Jakarta. Police fired tear gas to break up crowds gathering near Parliament last month. The protesters are angry at proposed new laws outlawing premarital sex, restricting contraceptive sales and cracking down on blasphemy. The changes have sparked a wave of demonstrations across the country described as the worst unrest for 20 years. Our Indonesia correspondent Anne Barker says there's widespread frustration at the agendas of the new parliament. Bev, we've seen massive protests across Indonesia in the past week, rolling protests that have uh, been happening on and off in Jakarta and other major cities. Now, the main reason has been a suite of bills that have been before the parliament. The old parliament actually ended its uh, rule, if you like, on Monday, and the new parliament was installed yesterday. And uh, the main bills that they're angry about was the uh, anti-corruption agency legislation that's already been passed that effectively weakens the anti-corruption uh, commission here in Indonesia. It's one of the most trusted institutions and yet it's been under attack by uh, members of that previous parliament. That's a bill that's already been passed. There are protesters demanding that Joko Widodo, the president, repeal that bill. He has agreed to consider that, consider revoking it under the new parliament that has only just begun. But there are other laws as well. There was the criminal code, which is a, a, a law that goes back to the Dutch colonial era and some of the provisions in that bill which have not been passed uh, include what's called morality laws, things that would restrict uh, personal freedoms. Uh, we've heard about the, uh, the provision that would ban sex outside marriage cohabitation, even gay sex by default, things like abortion on demand, uh, insulting the president, insulting the courts would become a criminal offence that would be punishable by law. So those bills or provisions are not yet passed. And one of the reasons why the protests were so big and strong in the last week or so was the, uh, the hope that they would stop the uh, last parliament from passing those bills as was planned and allow the new parliament to start from scratch. It's yet to be seen whether that parliament will uh, deal with this in a hurry. Certainly there's pressure for them to uh, now do so, but to, uh, to weaken the, the provisions, or whether it could take some time to consult community groups, civil society groups, as President Joko Widodo had promised. Now, there were protests also against other things, including the militarization uh, that's been happening in recent weeks in Papua. Even Indonesia's response to these massive forest fires that we've seen in Sumatra and Borneo. But certainly the legislative agenda, I think, is what has been the major uh, source uh, of discontent among those protesters. And so then a fair a bit of pressure on, uh, on, as you say, this new parliament, the new ministers that have been sworn in, and in fact the very first female speaker. That's right. Uh, Puan Maharani is now the first female speaker of the House of Representatives here in Indonesia. She's the daughter of Megawati Sukarno Putri, who was the president back in the early years of the century, uh, soon after Suharto was uh, toppled. And uh, she's the granddaughter of Sukarno, the founding president in Indonesia, who ruled after independence in the 1940s. Now, her appointment was unanimous among members of the PDIP party. That's the party that Megawati Sukarno Putri still chairs and the party that uh, Joko Widodo is a member of. And uh, she, uh, her appointment is seen as an assertion of that family's sort of prominence in Indonesian politics over the last 70 years. Uh, now, ordinarily, her appointment might pass relatively unnoticed, but she, uh, it, it, the timing is interesting given that the uh, legislation I mentioned earlier that weakens the Anti-Corruption Commission has been such a bone of contention here in Indonesia. The fact that uh, that commission was set up to uh, fight graft, fight corruption and by uh, extension cronyism. Uh, this is obviously an example of a, a family that has had a sort of a dynastic rule in Indonesia over the last 70 years and, there, and many critics would say that her appointment just shows that you know the parliament has returned to the days where uh, there is an elite in power and not people who are appointed on merit. So certainly some would see her, her appointment as controversial. And of course, placing pressure on the president, who sometimes is considered not to have a, an independent enough voice and enough power of his own. Interestingly enough, he is now looking to talk to some of those independence leaders um, in West Papua, another big bone of contention for this government.
That's right. We've seen ongoing protests now in Papua and West Papua, the two very troubled provinces in Indonesia's east, going back six weeks since there was a, 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 a riot in Surabaya in eastern Java where Papuan students claimed that they were the uh, target of uh, racial abuse. Now, in the last day or so, things have escalated along the border with Papua New Guinea. There have been unconfirmed reports of a shooting along the, uh, the northern part of that border. We're told that the border has been in lockdown, that it has been closed and it will be uh, closed for uh, some foreseeable time. Uh, but it's very hard to pin down exactly what has been happening there, whether two soldiers have been shot, as some reports are suggesting, or whether it's just skirmishes and further clashes, as, we, as we've seen in uh, other towns in Papua in the last week. Just last week, 30-plus uh, people were killed in Wamena in central Papua province. That was the single worst incidence of violence for years, where uh, uh, students from one Papuan school uh, allegedly went on a riot, burning down homes and buildings that belong to non-Indigenous Papuans, as in uh, migrants from other parts of Indonesia. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, sort of clashes between the Indigenous population and the Indonesian population, and things have definitely been worsening in the last, uh, the last few weeks. Good to talk to you, Anne. Thanks so much. Thank you, Beth.